Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to give you a quick demo to show you how you can track weekly and historical project statuses. So one of the great joys of Smartsheet is the automation and the immediate visibility of data given it's cloud-based. And so as soon as someone updates the status, you have that visibility wherever and with any connected sheets. One downside that some stakeholders find when moving to this new way of working is that they don't have access to the historical data they might have had previously when they've saved individual files. So one way around this is actually to create a automation which creates a backup um, and a snapshot of that view on a weekly basis for you. So here I've got my dashboard which is updated automatically, but I want to go back and see what the trend is over time in that case. So what I've got here as a demonstration on this is a weekly trend report for four projects which I'm tracking. And you can see from August through to now, which is November, the various stages, how they've been on each week. And again, you can see from a portfolio perspective how that changes over time. And then you can add a quick glance, see red, amber, green. So very easy from a stakeholder view. So this view in the dashboard could be put into any other dashboard, however you like. So how's this working? So the data is no different in that it comes from the portfolio summary sheet. But what I do is I use Data Shuttle on a weekly basis to take a snapshot, record that information and put it into a history file. So here I've got a history file, which then dates back, goes back to the beginning. And you can see the all the red, amber, green, which is updated and on a weekly basis on Fridays after all the reports are in, it then takes a snapshot and pushes it through to here to say, and it updates the information on what's the project, what's the um, date of the update, what's the latest red, amber, green status, and then the status summary, risks and issues, escalations and decisions. So let me just give you a quick overview in terms of the process and then we'll come back to this piece. So I've got portfolio summary sheet and every Friday, as I was saying, it then takes a snapshot and offloads a view of that into a file and it saves it as an attachment. So again, I specify which are the columns that I want to be downloaded. And the joy of using Data Shuttle is that you can specify only a certain amount of columns. Now, this process can be done without Data Shuttle. The one challenge is though, that what you'll be doing is you'll be copying rows, and then what it means is everything in that whole portfolio sheet will be copied across, which might not be a problem, but obviously it's a lot more information moving. And also, you, that would happen anytime a change is made to the status, which could be more than once in a week, but you know, on the basis it's only happening once a week. My process using Data Shuttle means you can specify it only happens at a set time once a week. So I've got it a close of Friday, that's when it takes place. The file is um, saved as an attachment. And the way the Data Shuttle works is I have a trigger that when this attachment is updated, it triggers off another Data Shuttle, which then says uploads that information into a sheet. So that information goes into what I call a transit sheet and it pushes the information into there. When information, new information lands in this sheet, it says, I've got new rows in here. That triggers an automation to move those rows into the RAG history sheet. So what's great here is those rows, they get added onto the bottom of what is there previously. If I didn't do this and I went straight from data shuttle to the RAG history sheet, mm -hmm. What the data shuttle does is it's looking for the unique reference and it's matching those rows. And so it would either overwrite that information or it wouldn't update that information. So I have to have this interim step with this extra sheet, which is fine. doesn't create any complication. It's just one more step in the process. So the information then goes through to your RAG history sheet. And then from there, your weekly metrics can be updated with that um, information. You can have a report, which then goes onto the dashboard and then you've got your dashboard overall updated. So let's go back to the various sheets and see how that is happening. So from the portfolio sheet, as I was showing you, I've got the various columns here. And in this case, I've got project name, I've got the state, status of the RAG, I've got the date, and I've got the various bits of information going across here. So if I go to Data Shuttle, I have a offload workflow where it says weekly RAG download. And so in this case, I'm just gonna jump into it and edit workflow just so you get a bit of a sense. It's taking the information from my portfolio summary sheet. It's replacing the rows. And what I'm asking it to do is it's putting it as an attachment. And this is the name of the file. 
and etc. There's no filters or anything, and I've got the column mapping, and then I've got the schedule to say run on Friday, run at close of day Friday, and that's it. Really. So I'm going to come out of that bit. So I'm going to exit the workflow creator because that's running, and I'm not don't need to run it in this case. So that process now runs. Once that has been downloaded, and just to give you a view, so it downloads that and puts it into this file called rag history. So if I just show you the attachments, attached to this, I've got rag history, and you can see this is being updated. So it's at version three at the moment. So that once that's updated, I also have a data shuttle, which runs on the upload workflows. So the trigger for the update rag is that it triggers on attachment. So when that file in the rag history show, sheet that I've just shown you is changed, it immediately knows, well, take that information and put it somewhere else. And what it does is it then puts it into this sheet here called project status update. Um, and it puts it into that file there. And from there, the information, so let me just go into here and just show you this file. So this is just what I call the transit sheet and it is a snapshot. So the information is copied across into this sheet here and it's empty for a reason because I've got an automation set up so that whenever any new information comes into this sheet, it comes in and there's a trigger and it says, well, new information is in, let's move this new information onto the other sheet. So it then moves it from that sheet onto this rag history sheet here. Once in this file, therefore it's added to the bottom and so you have the history over time. And once it's in there, that, therefore that means that it can then go into this metrics sheet here. And what I've created is using the um, symbol rows. I've created these columns to be symbols on that side and I've kind of put the dates across the top. But if I go across to the side, actually what I've got is date sheets so if I just go a bit further across, I've got date columns here, which is looking at the date, and it's using a formula to look across and say, if the date is between this week and this week, then it is the right date. So let me just pause and just give you a view in terms of that um, formula. So let's just open up the formula so you can see it a bit more clearly. So again, so I've got an index collect formula there, and it's looking to say if it's between certain information, then bring back the value, which is red on that side. Also, whilst I'm here, I'm going, well, I might as well do some metrics here. So how many green, yellow, and reds are there per week? So that then also feeds into the dashboard. So with this, in terms of the, that overall view, I've got this in terms of my metrics sheet. In order for it to appear on the dashboard, I then create a report, so it goes onto the dashboard. Um, instead of a sheet onto the dashboard. So that's the report going onto the dashboard. But then the metrics in this sheet down here can immediately go through as a chart uh, into there. So again, this is a chart pulling from the metrics sheet, whereas this is the report going across. So it's a process. Like many things, it's about working out what you want to do and how to achieve it. Smartsheet there's so many different ways to achieve so many things um, on this piece and it's really just a case of working out how to achieve it on that side. So for those of you who are looking to track historical data both visually but also then have that snapshot over time, then this is an incredibly powerful way of doing it and again using Data Shuttle um, is my key recommendation on this piece. And it can be done for this data summary but also if you think for many other things where you've got entries coming in where things are changing you can then keep a historical record and build that over time with these items just being saved using that um, the same process so i trust this has been useful for you in terms of seeing how to track weekly and historical project statuses and more videos to follow with similar um, tricks on how to do funky things within smartsheet thanks for watching this is rich coles from productive project solutions